Hey everybody, what's happening? I'm Adam, this is GoTo Outdoors, and I would like to welcome you back to another video today. Got a couple things I want to talk about. Mostly what I'm going to be talking about is going to be a new cooking setup that's kind of an alternate to the one that I had in my last video, which you can find here. But first things first, I'm going to head outside because this sunset is kind of working up to be awesome tonight, and I don't want to miss it. So let's head outside. I'll show you what I see out there. I'll probably got to come back in because it's probably going to get too dark too quickly after the sun sets, because that's what happens. Let's go outside. Just kind of came out here to enjoy the sunset. Had a great day. It's been awesome. It, the first night of a hard, hard frost of the year, and it's, you know, fall is finally here. Couldn't be happier. I love it. Fall is my favorite season. It's when everything great happens. It's when the leaves change color, even though they're all going to fall off right now because of the, the frost last night. Hunting seasons really pick up again, you know, and the holidays are right around the corner. So it's a great, great time of year all around. Definitely my favorite. So yeah, with the colors of that sunset right there, it's fantastic. Obviously, you can see with my super, super janky little time-lapse I have going on my cell phone right now that I mean how could you not enjoy that what fantastic colors you know what? hold please I'm gonna take some pictures of that because the color right now is choice bear it back oh also I do actually have my fire pit ready so I'm gonna be lighting that here in a few minutes after I get everything squared away just gonna enjoy the sunset for what it is because remember I like to tell folks that you need to find a reason to smile it actually looks good right off the back of the truck there too slick reflection find a reason to smile and this for me today is a good reason to smile I mean, these colors are spectacular fall is here like I said apart from you know right there in front of the you know where the, the sunset is right there there ain't another cloud in the sky. <laughs> Anywhere. But, uh, right at night, sailor's delight. I'm not a sailor. But I guess you could apply that to anybody who's outside. Well, anybody outside anyway who's enjoying the fruits of our creator. Because, wow. Okay, so I was outside for a little bit longer than I thought because that fire pit was awesome. Had it going. Great bed of coals, couldn't film anything because it was too dark. I don't really have a good light for that. But I'm back inside now, so let's get started. So what I wanted to talk about today was this. This is the Jetboil Zip System. And at least for a little while, this is the setup that I'm going to be using when I go into the backcountry. It's a little bit more self-contained all-in-one than the setup that I had in my last video. So, yeah. Let's talk about it. So the first thing I should mention is as soon as I picked this up, I brought it home and I weighed it. This without the gas canister inside, which these will actually fit inside of here completely. It'll nest inside with everything else. Without the gas can, this weighed 13.7 ounces, which is 3.1 ounces more than the last setup that I had. So 376 grams is the weight of the jet boil zip system without any of the fuel inside so what comes in this a bit more than i actually expected so the lid let's start off with the lid i really love this like i mentioned in my last setup what i like to do is actually strain out the pasta or whatever noodles i happen to be cooking inside of my cook pot and the lid on this does come with a sipper spout and drain holes in the back and also has a nice vent in the, the, uh, the top center so the vent is so you don't get any back pressure issues and glug 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 when you're trying to take a sip of something like hot chocolate which is awesome in the backwoods but that said it's kind of awesome that it's a good you know and it, it seals it seals on there so props to the lid design on this one inside of course you have the stove itself now the jet boil zip system does not have one of the piezo um, igniters it doesn't have one of the, the friction igniters it just has the nozzle 
fine tunability on that nozzle is very good, just like what I had on the MSR Pocket Rocket. Um, the stove element itself is a little bit larger, which I kind of like, and it gets a bit more even flame distribution, which is handy, again, if you're simmering something. Um, there's a lot of st stoves that you have that don't have a lot of fine-tuning abilities when it comes to actually how much heat you're putting out off of your little camping stove. So, hey, it is what it is. On that note, let me check something real quick because I'm not sure what the stove itself weighs and I cannot keep my hands on this. But hang on, give me one second. All right, so after just weighing this, the stove itself weighs exactly four ounces, 4.0 ounces, and that is 114 grams. So it's kind of heavier than the MSR Pocket Rocket, but not by much. Um, but let's check one thing that I did not check before, and that is actually what the stove element itself weighs. So one second, please. Sweet. So just this weighs four ounces exactly, 4.0 ounces, which is 114 grams. It's a bit heavier than the MSR Pocket Rocket. If I remember correctly, the MSR Pocket Rocket was 2.3 ounces, so this is almost twice as much. But again, not a super ultralight setup. I don't mind a couple extra ounces. Let's see what else is in here. Let's turn this upside down. And I cannot keep anything in my hands today. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a little adapter, actually. that you actually put on top of the stove itself. There's a couple notches you could probably see on the side there. And what those do is kind of hook in there. So when you add this to the top of your jet boil stove, you can actually use this with any other kind of cooking pot. You don't need to have the actual jet boil system that clips into this. but that's kind of cool. I really wasn't expecting that when I first opened this up, but hey, bonus. Now, in terms of clipping onto the cup itself, here's what we're going to get to. Uh, this bottom is just a plastic cover, which actually does have measuring marks inside. This is a measuring cup that also just, again, pops onto the bottom here and protects the bottom from getting dinged up too much, uh, protects the, the flux ring system that's inside of here. And that flux ring I'll get to here in a minute. But what this is actually designed to do with the cap of the stove itself without that adapter on it is this will just line up again with those holes. You see there's a notch on there and that clips in. So that locks on. So what makes this handy is this right here. This is the one thing that actually was tucked in in the very bottom. And, okay, so what is this? This is a little triangular piece of support with legs that fold out. And it actually clips into the bottom of a gas canister. Stabilizer legs. This is awesome. This is one thing that I might actually pirate for my other systems. Um, why this adapter doesn't come with more uh, stove kits is beyond me because that is so simple but so smart. Just being able to stabilize what you're cooking on, it will save you a lot of stress because I have knocked over stoves, I've knocked over entire cooked meals just as I was about to eat them and had to start from scratch. Not awesome. This would have been a lifesaver in those situations. So, anyway, now that the stove is again clipped onto the bottom of the pot mug thing itself, if you put the whole setup here, that's ready to go. So it's very stable. Everything's clipped in. Everything's good to go. You pop your lid on there. That's more than kind of handy. That's fantastic. <laughs> so I don't know the boiling speed on this. I haven't used it to actually cook too much yet. Anything where I timed it anyway. I have boiled a little bit of water to make one cup of hot chocolate, but I don't know exactly what amount of liquid I had in there. I just kind of eyeballed it. And again, like I said, I don't really worry too much about cook times. It really doesn't matter to me because I'm never in that much of a rush. It is what it is. That said, 
I believe this is actually going to be more efficient than the setup I was using before because again, like I was mentioning, this does have a fine tunability to it that I look for. But the other reason I think this is going to be more efficient is not just because of the fine tunability of the stove itself, it's actually this part right here. You can probably see in there those little weavy metal bars. That is what they call their flux ring and what that does is actually gives you more surface area for heating up what you're cooking. It also acts as a bit of a windbreak. So the fact that this is clipped onto the top of the stove and you have the right there, I think that's pretty awesome. This is the first jet boil system that I've ever actually bought. I can't complain about that. I think that's actually pretty handy. And again, I don't mind the fact that this weighs a few more ounces than my previous setup because it's all in one. I mean, it's completely self-contained. I don't need to have a separate, uh, you know, mesh bag that's going to get holes in it, get torn up. It's all just kind of right there. The one thing I will mention is while the measuring cup is handy, and I'm probably going to carry it with me just so I can have a measuring cup and then, again, protect the bottom of the flux ring system, I don't like the idea of probably drinking out of that, so I carry this. This I kind of always had with me just as an extra cup. It is a Cita Summit. Uh, X-Series cup. Uh, it's just your typical collapsible cup and I think this is just a couple ounces by itself. Hold please. So yeah, this is 2.4 ounces or 68 grams. And it's very easy to collapse down. The best part is, if I did want to keep everything together in another bag or pouch, it kind of fits right on the top of there. So I keep it all in line. That's pretty awesome. Like I've said before, I really like having something warm to sip on while I'm cooking the rest of my dinner, so I'll probably use this anyway. I'll probably carry this with me. The fact that this is 2.4 ounces and that is 13.6, that brings you up to 16 ounces total. So I have a pound. So without the weight of a fuel canister, this cooking system is going to be exactly one pound, which is still not too bad in the grand scheme of things. You know, this isn't going to be a backpacking setup. This is just something I'm going to use through the winter, use when I go out on hunting trips, camping trips, something I can just keep in the back of the truck if I need to, you know, stop somewhere. Or, hey, if I just feel like sitting on the back of the driveway like I was earlier and just want to whip up something quick, like some hot chocolate, because winning for hot chocolate, that's something I can keep handy. Okay, one thing I did notice just now when I was trying to put everything back together I kind of got things out of order, so it didn't fit together the right way the first time around. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you the order that everything goes back into here so you don't have the same issue I did and try it six different ways. So first things first, you take this little stand adapter, you make so that the flat side is down. That goes in first. Second thing is going to be this little adapter that you use for the pots. You fold in the four legs and you put it in with the, the legs upward. So again, put that in, make sure it's flat. The third thing I put in there is going to be actually the gas canister itself. And again, I, did, I never include the weight on these because I've seen these weigh anywhere from seven ounces to nine ounces and depending on how full it is, it is what it is. You, you don't count this with the weight of your cooking setup. But anyway, that said, this goes in upside down because what you see is when that's set up in there it gives you a little pocket to fit that nub right down in the center so there we go that is in there now last thing is you got the stove itself the stove put in upside down i thought it looked better going right side up because it kind of flattened everything out no that's wrong you don't do that you flip it upside down and it just slots right into place that'll give you enough room to pop the top on there and it will be flat. And lastly, of course, you take the measuring cup, you make sure you line up around the little nubs there, and boom, there you have it. And for good measure, got my cup on top as well. So right now I've seen it anywhere online from about $84.95. Uh, there's various places you can get it online. You know, REI has it. I've seen it at Backcountry. I've seen it a couple other places. Amazon has it for a lot more. I think Amazon has it for 149 right now, which there's literally no reason for that. 
They do have good sales on some things, just this isn't one of the ones I would recommend shopping on Amazon. There are far cheaper options out there. All I have to do is search. But I can't wait to actually get out and use this more often. I really want to get this broken in because I forgot. The one thing I didn't mention, this has a neoprene sleeve around the outside, and that sleeve has a handle. And this on this side here there's another little tab there which would be a great place to pop a spork or a spoon or something else like that to kind of keep it all in one place they kind of thought out the details on this one hats off to jet boil i'm really excited to use this now going forward and who knows i might even use this as a backpacking setup you know it just seems like it might make sense I just noticed something. The way I have everything tucked into this is 100% backwards. <laughs> they have a diagram. Let's turn this on. They have a diagram right there. Right there on the order you put things in. Stand. Adapter. My light died. <laughs> Stand. Adapter. Gas can. Stove. And I don't know what's on the bottom. Anyway, I do it backwards. I'm going to keep doing backwards. Looks better this way. Anyway, <laughs> that is funny. I kind of feel dumb now for not noticing that sooner. <laughs> Learn from my mistakes, everybody. I'm here to help you. <laughs> so, anyway, going forward, I'm going to be keeping this in the truck. I'm sorry, I'm really amused with myself after just finding that. I really feel like a horse's patoot. <sighs> wow. Anyway, that said, this is something I'm going to just be keeping in the truck for whenever I head out somewhere. It's going to be able to be tossed in a backpack, tossed in the boat if I ever need to. It's self-contained, makes it easier to keep track of, and it doesn't rattle nearly as much as my last cooking setup, which I think is a bonus. At the end of the day, it's all about convenience, portability, and durability. And, you know, of course, durability... Uh, that will be kind of a stand the test of time kind of thing. I haven't used this other than once or twice, like I said, making hot chocolate. So I don't know how it's going to stand up, you know, to being in the outside pouch of a backpack if I do any hiking or get chucked around when I'm hunting or just, you know, rolling around in the truck. I'm probably going to secure it because this is a nice little kit and I really like it. The durability, again, this is aluminum. I don't know if I mentioned that before. Anyway, this is aluminum. It's not titanium. It is coated aluminum. So, by itself, it might weigh a little bit more. Like I said, I, I don't have a lot of experience cooking in aluminum. I don't know if I like it because it doesn't really conduct heat that well. And if I am simmering something like noodles or pasta or, you know, rice and beans, because rice and beans and a taco is choice when you're out in the woods, I don't know how well it's going to work. I think it's going to get hot spots and I might be more prone to burning stuff in here. That's really the reason I don't like cooking in aluminum. You know, you see online there's a lot of people that, that have complaints about, you know, aluminum leaching into the food. Well, I don't cook a lot of acidic things. I don't use lemon juice. I don't use, I don't like cooking tomatoes because tomatoes aren't my thing. So I really don't have to worry about that. And if you're just boiling water, okay, big deal. At the end of the day, it's not going to hurt you. So yeah, that is the Jetboil Zip System. Minus the Cedar Summit Cup. Forget I did that. So <laughs> I really can't wait to bring this out and give this a good solid rundown. And I'll give you my thoughts. Uh, I do have a trip coming up where I'm going to be spending some time in the woods here in the next couple weeks. And I'm going to be bringing this with me instead of my other cooking setup. I'm going to give this thing a good solid once over and put it through its paces. It's going to be getting super cold. It's going to be, yeah adverse conditions because winter camping is a lot different than summer camping and temperature does affect how the isobutane uh, canisters, uh, isopropane canisters inside of these uh, stoves you know, that, that you use for fueling these stoves, that does really affect them. So we'll see how this makes it work 
going forward and that's again kind of why I wanted to try this in the winter is because of the flux ring and the, the efficiency setup I think this might actually work a little bit better in colder climates for what I'm going to be out in but that's neither here nor there um, so yeah that's the jet boil zip and that's all I got for you today so like I always say thanks again for watching make sure you find a reason to smile today and I'll catch you in the next one